On today's show, commutation and enhancements of single premium immediate annuities. Part five of this week's series on annuity solutions with nationally recognized annuity expert, Mike McLaughlin. Hi everyone, I'm Steve Savant, syndicated financial columnist and contributing author and a backroom technician and Ginsmark. Let's get down to business. Well, welcome to the show, day five, Mike. Five days back, yeah. You doing okay? Yeah. Well, I, I, I'm, this week's been very informative, I have to say, and I think a lot of our audience is just really appreciating your educational ability to convey it. Sometimes when we get up into a high MBA voltage vocabulary, you know, we kind of lose it. Commutation of enhancements of single free. That's, that's a right. mouthful. Exactly. Walk me through the, give me the decryption on that. Well, again, this is something that's been around for a while, but when I'm out visiting with advisors, rarely do I hear people say, I knew about that. And it kind of goes back to that commercial, this isn't your old, uh, your father's uh, mm -hmm. uh, Oldsmobile anymore. Mm -hmm. This isn't your father's uh, SPIA anymore. Many carriers have the ability to do a traditional SPIA payout, life, life in 10 mm -hmm. years, whatever. Whenever that you have a term certain or a period certain associated with it, some carriers allow the ability to commute that. And what that means is that you can take what amounts to a present value of those remaining guaranteed payments and you can take it in cash based upon certain parameters of the contract. Mm -hmm. But when you think that you used to be able to set aside $100,000 and pay out X amount of dollars for the rest of my life for 10 years certain or 20 years certain, and now I have the availability to go in and grab some cash, mm -hmm. that's unique and that provides an additional level of liquidity that wasn't in your father's SPIA payment and certainly wasn't in your father's pension payment. Now, now how, am I, I'm giving up something for this now, right? To have this liquidity now. Sure. Yeah. So what kind of numbers would you say roughly have you seen in your income scenarios? Are like 50 basis points, a 60 re base point return? What am I giving up to have that kind of liquidity and how much liquidity are you giving me? Well, if you take a look at the uh, Canex report that we mm -hmm. ran and taking a look at uh, your traditional $100,000 mm -hmm. uh, SPIA payment of life and a, and a 10 year period certain in here, uh, what you don't uh, what what you you don't see it like a rider cost like you would on mm -hmm. a fixed index um, mm -hmm. chassis. It's really built into the pricing of the product. Great example here is. In uh, by, by the way, I just want to stop you there. That this is exactly the argument I've heard you say, a Curtis Cloak from Thrive University. We're always accused of this fee drag. It's already incorporated into our product line. Mm -hmm. and this is this debate that goes on. That's really, in my view, a red herring. We're chasing nothing. This is already incorporated into our issue. We're not talking about fee drag here. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I just wanted to stop because I think it's an important uh, area because we always get hung up there and it shouldn't be. Well, and the other thing that we've talked about this week is the longevity risk. When you walk through here, take a look at integrity, uh, which probably has the most flexible opportunity for commutation. You can do it multiple times during the 10 year period. <laughs> you can take all of it at once at 90%. Maybe you want to do 30% after three years, whatever. You have complete flexibility. So you go in here and a typical advisor is going to say, you know what, I want the most rate of return, right? We're always trying to get the right. best for our client. So that payment would be $561 for life, guaranteed for 10 years. With integrity, that payment is, um, looking here, at $543. So you're giving up $18 a month, mm -hmm. okay? The question is, is would you give up $18 a month to make sure that I had access to $100,000 at any point in time that I need to, or basically $90,000? Now, when you factor in the longevity here, take a look at the monthly taxable portion. Mm -hmm. Because of our different carriers' assumptions of life uh, assumptions, the monthly taxable portion with the highest carrier is 161. With integrity, the taxable portion is only $143. That's a 18-month tax-free uh, part of that coming mm -hmm. back uh, for life expectancy. So you've essentially made up a lot of that cost in the form of tax-free income. So you really have to look down multiple levels about not only is it the monthly income, but it's what you keep and the flexibility. Okay, so you're totally right now. This is not my father's retirement annuity of the old days. No. I came into the business, I don't remember any of this. So what we're saying now is, you're, we're, we're, we're actually bringing a liquidity issue to what I thought was a SPIA that was once it's turned on, that's it, and if you die the next day, nothing. Exactly. Now I have access to this as a liquidity issue. Mm -hmm. Now, how big is this now? Is this selling now in this regard? Well, yeah, think about that. This I mean, is, the spread you just told me is nothing, $18. $18, and you can make uh, up a lot of it on a taxable situation if you're, if you're a high uh, uh, wage earner. And, and think about from an, an, an overall flexibility standpoint. Mm -hmm. we, 
you know, you're looking at a payout on $100,000 of what, about 6.8%. And we're looking at a scenario here of a 65 year old. I would challenge you any income writer to go out and find a 6.5% factor at age 65. Mm -hmm. you're, you typically see them at four and a half or 5%. Mm -hmm. You may get close to that on the Allianz if you purchased it 10 or 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. So the payout on this is significantly higher and you get the exclusion ratio and you still have 90% of your liquidity. So really we can build in this, this liquidity. We're taking off the table one of the greatest objections to single premium media annuities. I mean, this is huge. Mm -hmm. We get back from the break. We're gonna talk about commutation. I think this is a, another little arrow in your quiver for income, especially annuity income that you cannot live. And oh my gosh, I might even have some access to cash. Yeah. We'll be right back after the break. Back in the day, life insurance professionals were called field underwriters. Then, carriers trained their field force in the basics of life insurance underwriting. Today, the insurance industry doesn't educate the agent population as they once did. But now, you can have the informed risk guide at your fingertips so you can illustrate a reasonable rate class for your life insurance prospects. Just request your copy of the informed risk guide at downtobusiness.ashbrokerage.com. It's free from Ash Brokerage, the practice enhancement company. Well, welcome back to our second segment. Of course, we're with Mike McLaughlin. We're walking through commutation enhancements on single premium media annuity. So I guess the word liquidity is there, and that's a huge feature for consumers. You never know what's going to happen later on in life. You didn't, did you tie it up? Maybe not. Walk me through this other option here, because I always thought that I'm on, okay, I got a liquidity, but I'm still on my platform of lifetime payout with a 10-year certain. Mm -hmm. But you said if I'm hanging on this 10-year certain and I live past that 10th year, what happens to my premium again? Well, or my uh, actual distribution. Actual distribution, it pops right back up to the guaranteed contract of $543. Because remember, the only thing that you can commute, we don't know, you know, we know the life expectancy, mm -hmm. but we don't really know how long you're going to live, so we can't commute that actual mm -hmm. dollar amount. So we can only commute the actual period certain. So we're gonna commute $543 for 120 payments, reduce that by current interest rates typically, and by um, however much longer you have until that 10 years. That's the amount of cash that you can pull out and do whatever that you want. Mm -hmm. And then uh, beginning on the uh, first day after your 10th year, you begin receiving $543.99 guaranteed for the rest of your life, no matter how long that you live. I could see this putting a significant dent in the J.G. Wentworth commercials. Absolutely. I mean, you don't think about it, you know, because it's your, they said, you can't, you need your money now. And that's the whole issue of secondary markets. Mm -hmm. We're creating a secondary market within the product. Yeah. It's kind of like uh, terminal illness writers on life insurance. Uh, they were put in there uh, to get away from some of the life settlements. So this is a great way to have access to your cash and when you've given up um, irrevocability. We talk to a lot of clients about, excuse me, a lot of advisors that are looking at lifetime income. We may do a life and 30 year period certain so that you're not gonna see a big difference in that change because we're matching period certain with mm -hmm. uh, life expectancy, but putting in that period certain puts in a guarantee or puts in that availability to commutation. And so that way they could go ahead and take a bigger lump sum if they need more access to their cash. When you're looking at this, what, what is the market doing right now? Are, they, are advisors aware of this enough that you're seeing people play in this commutation enhancement area? You know, I think part of our problem from the marketing standpoint is that, uh, as you mentioned at the top of the show, the fee for that is already embedded into the mm -hmm. carrier's monthly income. So you don't um, see any of that. So what we do as advisors is we take a look at this Canex report and we take a look at what's the highest one, okay? Yeah, and, and by the way, just a little side note because we do have consumers that watch our show. Not only is the fee embedded in the show, but the compensation to the advisor is already embedded in this. And I just want to talk about the you know, fee drag and advisor drag. That is already incorporated in all this. So you're saying, Steve, you mean there's no ancillary issues like this? Well, this is why I keep bringing this up because I want people to see this is our number. This is the true number that's you're the receiving, number. Yep. and that's it. It's not a net number after, this is the number. Yep, absolutely. So, yeah, I think that's part of our problem, that we, we've got all of that put in there uh, so that when we talk with advisors, they're looking at 561, 553, yeah, that's our best deal. But the quote-unquote, what is the best deal? Mm -hmm. Is liquidity, 
necessary. Mm -hmm. And I would t argue that if you put that out in front of a client and say, mm -hmm. would I take $18 less to be able to have access to my money in the first 10 years? I bet you they would take it because I know that my life mm -hmm. has changed significantly over the last 10 years where, where you probably would have had mm -hmm. wanted to have some access to some cash. Okay, we're in annuity land. We're now talking about single premium annuity enhancements. We're thinking about adding liquidity to it. How much of these numbers change? Could they change as much as we see SPIAs and DIAs, traditional SPIAs and DIAs? Oh, the, yeah, they, they change on a weekly basis because, again, we're embedding these pricing and all these commutations mm -hmm. into our normal products. Um, if a carrier offers commutation like Integrity or Genworth, mm -hmm. that's embedded. And so it gets embedded into their normal rate mm -hmm. changes, which can change on a weekly basis. Well, speaking about rate changes, I think what, what was, one of these you said it was like 6% something rate of return. Um, one of these? Well, the payout would be equal to about a 6% um, payout on a fixed index. Okay, and that's at present Treasury... Well, yes, we're all yeah. fishing out of the same debenture pool. Mm -hmm. If we get a kind of an uptick, you know, there's already no noise that they're going to tamper with the tapering, right? Mm -hmm. The Fed. Mm -hmm. And if we start seeing finally some kind of uptick, this is only going to make this even greater. Absolutely, yeah. And, and again, it goes back to our argument for blocking different things mm -hmm. in this different block of money and, and trying to leverage so that you have assets under management so that maybe... If interest rates do go up in five mm -hmm. to seven years, you can pull out some assets under management mm -hmm. and redeploy those. I've noticed that some of these are so tactical for assets under management that it actually, the present value to buy down this benefit actually reduces what you necessarily would have needed in the portfolio like we talked about yesterday. Mm -hmm. And now there's even actually more money to be growing and appreciating as long as your risk tolerance will support it. Yeah, I think that it goes back to what's the purpose of the, of the vehicle. If it's income, you need to be looking at an indexed uh, mm -hmm. annuity, an income rider, or a SPIA, or a DIA. If you're there for accumulation, keep it in assets under management. Mike, this has been a great week. I thank you so much for being here. You have really enlightened a lot of us out here, and I want to be able to start using this as another arrow in my quiver. Well, that's all the time we have for today. Remember, before moving forward with any of the ideas you hear on our show, always consult your tax advisor, legal counsel, or your broker dealer compliance officer. Missed an episode? You can view all our past episodes at down to business dot ashbrokerage.com. And remember, you could be wiser as an Ash Brokerage advisor. I'm Steve Savant. I'll see you next week.